We're gonna install the ring gear on the carrier and pressing the carrier bearings onto the housing. Um, I've already done a little bit of prep work. First thing you wanna do is make sure that your ring gear bolt holes are clean and dry. No oily residue, no, noth no nothing like that. File the surface of the ring gear in the carrier. Um, you can use a file, There's, you can also use a, a, a stone, which is what I do. Just kind of do stuff like that, make sure you're, any, any high points are, are filed down. Lock tight your ring gear bolts. First step, set the carrier down and the ring gear. Get a couple, couple ring gear bolts ready. Slide these up. Now you notice on this one, it doesn't go on all, it doesn't go up all the way. When that happens, flip it over, take your dead blow hammer, and drive the ring onto the carrier. Okay, there you go. Should stay. Yep, there you go. And then snug these down. Careful not to go too high, uh, tight on these because you do want to torque them. You want to make sure they're not too tight. And you can go back and forth cross pattern if you'd like, but you don't really need to. Personally, I always go back to the first couple that I did just to make sure that, yeah, they're still, they're still tight, so they're good. Okay, with bearings, it's important while pressing them on, don't press on the cages. Make sure you press only on the inner, inner race there. This one will have no issue, but also be mindful when you flip it over to press the other one that you're not uh, sitting on the on the cage of this bearing either. Now your carrier is ready to go into the housing. I just put a little oil on my bearings. carrier and the ringer are ready to go. On this particular differential, the carrier adjustments for your preload and your, and your backlash are done by side adjusters. Some models of differentials, um, mainly all of your, all of your Danas, uh, 30s, 44s, older 44s, 60s, 70s, 80s, they'll use shims that are pressed between the carrier bearing here and, and, the, and, the, and the carrier. We'll share the link on how to make uh, a setup bearing so that you can just pull it off and on and, and how to adjust those shims quickly and easily. Next we'll put the depth shims on the pinion and press the pinion bearing on. It's pretty straightforward. Then back over to the press. Same thing goes for the pinion bearing as it was the carrier bearing. You want to press on the inner race and make sure not to press on the cage. Uh, we've got the ring gear bolted onto the carrier, we got the, the carrier bearings pressed on, we got the depth shim uh, set on the pinion with the bearing pressed on, we have our solid spacer here ready to go. Next step, we're going to install the bearings into the housing. There you go. Make sure the races are seated, you can hear it when it's, when it's down. For the inner pinion bearing, And for those who are just doing this at home, and you don't want to spend a you know thousand dollars on a punch set, just use a brass drift punch. There you go. Make sure it's down all the way. Okay, initial pinion installation. 
all your bearings. Because we're using a solid spacer on this one, we're not putting the seal in. For initial setup, I usually reuse the old, the old pinion nut. Um, on final assembly, I'll use the new factory or the new nut that comes with the kit. So another important step is once you have it tightened down and you feel like you have, you know, a decent amount of preload, you'll want to seat the pinion, uh, you'll want to seat the, the, the races because sometimes the pinion doesn't go in quite uh, straight and it'll feel like you have enough preload but if you strike it, sometimes it'll loosen it up. See, that one loosened up. So I took it. See, so yeah, that one loosened up after hitting it. So that's not enough preload, so I'll have to take it apart and reshim it. Okay, so our initial pinion setup, we did not have enough pinion preload. So on a solid spacer, what I do is I take the shim off that I had and I find a thinner shim that makes the bearings, you know, come closer together, I get more preload. See what that, let's see what that does. There we go, that's it. You can also put it in the shop press and, and press it down snug. But for those who don't have shop presses, Hope you got that on film. <laughs> we have quite a bit of preload now on the pinion bearings. But now this is what the uh, inch pound torque range that we were talking about in earlier is for. So measure the rolling resistance of the bearings to measure your bearing preload. So I got the uh, pinion preload to where I'm happy now. We're within spec on the on the pinion bearings. Carrier install of a side adjusted housing. Now when you set your side adjusters in, make sure they're not cross threaded. The easy way to tell if they are Drop your cap down. If they're tight there on both sides, you know you're good. Set this side in, but not tied up against the carrier bearing. You want a gap. Lightly snug down the cap bolts. You don't want them too tight.
there are different uh, side adjuster tools you can get. Yeah. Tools like this that can fit in here. And you can just use your socket. Uh, we have a, a homemade crescent wrench that we use here. So snug this side up. And uh, this is a difficult thing to explain. It's all by feel. But you don't want to, you don't want to be like super tight here because you're pressing it up against the, the pinion. So you just want it snug till it starts to, till it starts to catch. And then you come over on this side. And this is how you get your preload and your backlash. It's all in one shot. You want to tighten this side up as tight as you can to push everything over. The side with the gap. The side with the gap. Yeah. Pay attention to the type of uh, side adjuster locks you have. These are, as you can tell on this one, they have two teeth on them. Some have just one. If they have two teeth, you want to make sure that you split the, you, you want to split the, the holes so that the locks fit on and, can, and you can bolt it down. If you notice on the other side, I didn't do it. I did it if you had a single tooth. So see, that's not gonna work. So I have to, I'm gonna back this one off so that this one lines up. There we go, that'll do. Now, before I torque the caps down, I do have some backlash, you can feel, feel it. So let's torque our caps down and check our backlash. Presser 889, cap bolt torque, 90 foot pounds. Okay, now check our backlash. We use our dial indicator. Set it on a tooth in the direction that it's going. You don't want you don't want to have it up at a severe angle like that. You're not going to get a correct reading. You want it is in line with the, the direction you're going as you can get. But also make sure that you're not touching the tooth behind. There's a little bit of a gap there. Now we'll check our backlash. We want between six and ten thousandths. Let's see if I can. Uh... So I'm at nine thousandths on this one. So I'm a little, a little on the higher end, but I'm within spec. And now we'll check our pattern for depth. Take marking compound, mark some teeth. Uh, the pattern is the only way to tell if your pinion is, is, is correct, if it's um, too shallow or too deep. If you notice on this pattern, is that a good tooth? Maybe this one, this one. Um, it's got a hard line down here and then it just kind of just fizzles out up here and, and you know it doesn't really look very good this pattern is quite a bit too deep um, so the only way to fix that is to take it all apart uh, pull the pinion bearing off take some shims out and put it all back together again and run a pattern again all right so we're going to talk for a minute about the different areas of contact you can have on on the teeth of your ring gear um, if you notice on this on how the teeth are cut you notice how this this side is much more perpendicular to the carrier than this side. This side has much more of an angle. The more perpendicular side is always the drive side of the gear. The more perpendicular, or the, the more the more sloped one is your is your uh, is your coast side of the gear. So when you hear the words ter terms drive and coast, what that means is that this is the side that gets used when you're cruising down the road, when you're going forward. When your foot's on the gas, this is the side. This is the, the side of the tooth that, that, that gets all the contact. 
The coast side of the gear is called that because the only time it's touching the pinion is if your foot is off the gas, when you're coasting, or when you're in reverse. In other designations you hear, you'll hear uh, things like the face or the flank or the toe and the heel of the gear. The face of the gear is up here. This is kind of the tip. The outside edge of the gear is the, is the face. The flank is down here inside the valley. The heel is outside, away from the center line. This is the heel. The toe is inside of the center line. So here we have an example of a pattern that is too shallow. And what that means is that the, the head of the pinion, and you can see it down in the housing here, what that means is the head of the pinion actually needs to come farther in needs to come closer to center line, center line being where the axles are. The way to remedy this is to disassemble it and I actually have to add some shims to the depth to get that pinion head to come closer to center line so that this pattern that you can see here, see it's, it's got a nice, it's got a, it's got a line here and then it really nothing there. So for this pat, this pattern needs to go more inboard and the only way to do that is to get the pinion head to go cl closer to center line. Okay, so now we have an example of a good pattern. It's a nice kind of a big oval pattern. We got a we got a broad line up here, a broad line down there, and it comes up and around. That's that's the type of pattern you want to look for. That that tells you that the the pinion is centered on the on the ring gear.